Hey guys, Spud Knocker here, as always. And today we're going to go back to basics and do a companion video for my uh, Fundamentals of Air to Ground Tactics video and take a look at quantity, interval, and multiple when it comes to setting up your dumb bombs for attack runs here in DCS World and what those can do for you as a DCS World pilot. Now, uh, because of the private lessons that I do through my Patreon, I've been able to take a look at what vexes DCS World pilots, what DCS World pilots could work on to increase their uh, enjoyment as well as lethality and survivability in the target area, as well as um, what they do very, very well. So let's go ahead and dispel a couple rumors when it comes to my patron lessons. It's definitely not a racket to make people uh, pay just to fly with me. I do plenty of public uh, missions and stuff with lots of different people and none of them have ever paid a dime to fly with me. That's definitely not what I'm about. But the private lessons are a very fun little perk for my patrons who do help support my channel the most. And I am extremely grateful to their generosity uh, in supporting my channel. And all of that money that goes into the Patreon simply comes back to you guys. Uh, all that goes to is uh, learning materials for helping me learn more about military aviation to help you guys out with awesome videos as well as it goes to uh, photo editing software, video editing software, as well as uh, money to help replace hardware that wears out and breaks over time. Um, creating, creating, exporting, and uploading videos is very, very hard on the PC hardware and makes things wear out a little bit faster than your regular uh, user would uh, have to work with and Patreon has really, really helped me uh, replace broken components and things like that that have occurred over the time of my making uh, videos for you guys. And so it's been extremely helpful and I am 100% and extremely grateful to all of my Patreons who have uh, helped me out in terms of keeping the channel going. And like I said, the private lessons are simply just a fun little perk of those for those who um, help support my channel the most. And like I said, 100% grateful for all of that and that's how I just show my gratitude is working with them one-on-one uh, -on -one to help them out. Um, as a result I've taken guys who love DCS World videos and just got into DCS and need help from everything from how an airplane flies to how to even set up their controls to um, guys who want to make DCS World as beautiful as they can on their system so I help them out with graphical settings to guys who have been flying DCS World for a while now and just simply want to uh, have a good person to dogfight against or want to learn something really complicated that they're having trouble with like say dropping laser guided bombs in the F-14 Tomcat and anything in between of course. So uh, as a result, like I said, I've gotten a really good feel for what DCS World pilots do great, what they need to work on, and some things that DCS World pilots usually don't have the best grasp on. So um, one of the things that I've noticed is DCS World pilots, when they're dropping dumb bombs, tend to leave the quantity on one, as well as of course the multiple interval don't matter from there. And what that does is it makes them, when they're attacking a large target area, want to put the pipper on every single little target they want to hit and press the pickle button for each time they want to drop a bomb. Now this tactic works just fine, except it just really, really ups the pilot workload in the target area. And this is extremely important when you're in a very complicated mission with a bunch of people. Um, you've got SAMs coming up at you, you've got AAA coming up at you, you've got interceptors threatening you, and you're trying to keep track of your wingman, your leader, and any friendlies in the area that uh, you don't want to shoot down as you come off the target area. And so being able to set up your weapons and only have to press the pickle button once to drop all of your weapons and get a really good and lethal spread of bombs on your target is incredibly important and will just increase your enjoyment and lethality and hopefully survivability on the battlefield as you're able to concentrate on more than just lining up your pipper on every single spot you want a bomb to hit. So let's go ahead and hop in the office and get started with talking about uh, interval, multiple, and uh, quantity. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and start setting up our weapons as we orbit around Siri Island here in the Persian Gulf. Our target is going to be a Silkworm site over on Greater Tomb Island over there. And it, our intel shop has let us know that the Silkworm site is about 600 feet long with vehicles spaced out every 100 feet or so 
and those silkworms are threatening to engage neutral and friendly shipping in the Persian Gulf area here, so they must be uh, neutralized. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and set up a interval, multiple, and quantity of bombs that will give us a very nice even spread across that target area, and hopefully we'll be able to go in there and get a good bomb drop solution, and hopefully hit as many targets as we can within that target area. So first thing we're going to do is we'll go into air to ground mode, and that'll pop us right to our storage pa stores page on our left hand DDI. Um, as you guys saw in the earlier portion of this video, we currently have eight Mark 82s on our jet on Brew 33s on both our inboard and outboard stations. And we'll go ahead and select those Mark 82s. For the mechanical fuse, we'll select nose, and for the electronic fuse, we'll set instant. We'll go to our UFC, and we want to drop all of our bombs in one pickle button press. So we'll go ahead and set our quantity for eight. We can see this pop up in our program field down here. For our multiple, we'll go ahead and select two, and we can see the multiple uh, pop up down there. For our interval, let's go ahead and set 150. So now that we've got all of our values inputted, let's go ahead and talk about why I selected these values. The first one's very simple. Eight, I wanna drop all eight bombs with one press of the pickle button. Now what's a little bit more complicated is the multiple and interval. We know that our target area is 600 feet long on the ground due to uh, pictures from reconnaissance airplanes, satellites, drones, however we got that intel. So next thing we wanna do is look at multiple here. For multiple, I set two. What that means is as the computer dropping the bombs in the jet counts down, at each time it's ready to make a drop, it's going to drop two bombs simultaneously. Now eight divided by two is four. Uh, very simple math there. And we know that there's going to be four impact points with two bombs hitting each impact point. And for our interval, we've got 150 feet. And that is 150 feet between each impact point where those two bombs are going to impact at each point. So what that, the way I got that value was I simply took that 600 foot long target area and I divided it by our four impact points and we got 150 feet to get a good even dispersion of bombs across our target area. So I hope that's not too complicated for you guys but if you can kind of look at your intel kind of figure out how long exactly you think your target area is you can use this to really really increase your ability to get into a target area quick and get out even quicker because you're not having to line up your CCIP pipper on every single point you want to drop that to those bombs at. This is also a really, really good way method of like cratering a long runway with dropping bombs at certain points along that runway. Uh, say you want to drop a whole bunch of bombs across the runway on say the Caucasus map, you can use this to really make sure you crater every single part of that runway you want to crater with just one press of the pickle button, which is very, very cool. So it looks like Darkstar has some contacts out there, but we're not going to worry about them for now. Now, next thing to think about is where do those bombs fall when it comes to the CCIP Pipper? In the FA-18C here, we have the, in the CCI Pipper, that is, we want to put that in the middle of our target area. When we put that in the middle of our target area and we start holding down that pickle button and the bombs start to fall, bombs will fall before the target, uh, the Pipper on the target and after the Pipper on the target. So that's why we want to make sure we put it right smack in the middle and have it good to go there. A lot of people at the start of using this will put the pipper at the start of where they want their bombs to hit and then get a bit frustrated when they find that bombs are hitting before their pipper and after where they put their pipper and not understand why they're not hitting the target the way they want it to hit. So just keep in mind that you want to have your pipper right in the middle of where your bombs want you want your bombs to hit. So keep that in mind here. Another thing to keep in mind is when we look at the interval on modern computerized jets like our F-18C Hornet or the AV-8B Harrier that we have here in DCS, the interval is always going to be in feet between where those impact points will hit the ground. So 150 feet between each of our impact points. Now in older, less computerized jets like the F-14 Tomcat 
or the F5E Tiger II, your interval is actually going to be measured in milliseconds between when the bombs fall off the jet. Now, if you do some mathematical calculations or you look at a table on your kneeboard, you can find out what millisecond setting you want to put into your interval uh, settings in order to hit at certain points or certain uh, spaces between those impact points. Now, thankfully, in a computerized jet with a very computerized system uh, like the F-18C or the AV-8B, um, you're able, or even the upcoming F-16, of course, and hopefully the upcoming F-15E, you'll be able to just simply put in a distance between those impact points and the computer will do the rest and come up with a timing that it thinks will work the best for you to get what you, the pilot wants. So let's go ahead and start flying out towards our target area. We'll set up for a good bomb run and then hopefully we can demonstrate uh, how this works on the target area if hopefully I get a good bomb run in. So let's go ahead and zoom on back out. Alrighty, so we're currently about 23 nautical miles out from our IP inbound point, which is going to be Lesser Toom Island, which you can see right underneath the uh, bomb fall line out there. And we can see Greater Toom Island is out there as well. So we'll fly over Lesser Toom Island here, and then we'll go ahead and fly over uh, Greater Toom Island, drop our bombs, hopefully not get hit by a min pad or something, and then fly off the target area, and hopefully demonstrate that good dispersion of weapons. Now when I'm flying in the target area, I always like to have my uh, right DDI have my radar up. And we can see we do have a couple contacts out there, but we're not going to worry about them for now. On a left hand DDI, I always like to have my EW page. But because of that, we can't readily look down and take a look at our fusing options. So one way we can get back to the stores page very, very quickly to check that out rather than going through the menus is simply pull out of air to ground mode and pop right back in and we're brought right back to our stores page. And while we're on our stores page, we can look and see, yep, CCIP, uh, nose, instant for M-fuse and E-fuse. We got a quantity of eight, multiple of two, interval of 150 feet. So we're good to go there. And so we can pop out and go right back to our EW page. I find that having the EW page is very, very important as I find that the RWR indications that are on the HUD are not always super easy to interpret, especially what their azimuth is in relation to what your aircraft is. So that's why I always like to have the EW page up as a backup. And if you don't want that up, we of course always have our backup RWR scope down here, but it is kind of blocked by the uh, pedestal that the uh, DDI on the right hand side is on. So just keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a roll, right hand roll in, get uh, as close to the axis of that target area as possible. However, um, we don't want to be directly on the same heading that that target area is lined up on. The reason for that is if we're off just a little bit, it decreases the chance of missing laterally on the target area. This is a very, very important Thing to know if you're attacking like a bridge or some really really hardened structure you're more likely to get a direct hit if you fly just off the target's axis rather than directly on it where your bombs could fall left or right very very easily and miss entirely as well as for other kinds of targets like uh, our soft target here it's a really good way of making sure you get at least as much ordnance as possible to actually hit the target area so keep that in mind as well as well as it makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to get exactly on the perfect axis heading. So we can see through our dot labels, we do have our target area down there. We can see it's lined up right on the beach as we would expect a silkworm site to be. And we've got our countermeasures ready to go and ready to pop some flares to uh, get out of the way of any man pads that may be down there. So in just a second here, we're going to go ahead and roll in. Do a gentle roll in just to make sure we get a good lineup on that target area. I'm going to push the throttle up, try and get as much speed as possible to get that CCIP cross up on the HUD as quickly as we can without losing too much altitude and putting ourselves too far into that man pad envelope that uh, we know is down there. So bring up that CCIP cross. Gonna put the pipper right in the middle. Not the best drop in the world, but it's gonna work well for our demonstration here. We're popping flares. 
Then we can see our bombs fallen. And not the best uh, drop in the world, but it works well for our purposes of our demonstration here. And we can see that our bombs fell roughly about 150 feet apart and got a pretty good dispersion across that target area. Now hopefully we have some wingmen that will be able to help us out when it comes to hitting those targets again. Also keep in mind that with soft targets like these missile launchers here in DCS World, shrapnel damage is in fact modeled. However, there are no damaged models or textures for vehicles in the game at the moment. It's just simply a health bar and the only damage models there are is alive, burning, and dead. So these, but when you get the health bar of these ground units down to a certain point through near misses such as that, you know that those targets will no longer be able to function as missile launchers. Eagle Dynamics did model in that uh, if they're damaged enough, they're not going to be able to function anymore. And so a lot of those missile launchers down there will no longer be able to function, especially the very thin-skinned and very, very fragile uh, radar truck that's down there to help direct those silkworm missiles. So keep that in mind, and don't be too frustrated when you uh, don't get a direct hit on a target with a dumb bomb here in DCS World. More likely than not, you will have knocked out that thin-skinned target. Now tanks is a different story when it comes to those because they can be really, really tough nuts to crack when it comes to when using dumb bombs, but just keep that in mind and uh, you should be good to go. I would definitely bring some Mavericks or laser guided bombs if you're looking to hit tanks and things like that. So I hope you guys liked the video. I hope it cleared some things up and I hope it really did um, help you guys out with the um, use of intervals, multiples, and setting your quantity of bomb drops and why you would want to do that as opposed to simply leaving the quantity on one and dragging your pipper all the way across the target area. So thanks a lot guys. Please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. Like I said, it all comes back to you guys. It really helps keep my channel running and running missions for you guys. So thanks a lot guys and fly safe.